Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite lessons that I've been doing for a long time with students. And this is a, an animal portrait, I call them. And it's, a, it's going to be just the head of a zebra, or which is very similar to a zebra. It's called a quagga, which is an extinct subspecies of a zebra. And the quagga had the front half was had beautiful stripes just like your zebra. It was a combination of a zebra and a horse. And the back end of the quagga looked more like a horse. So it didn't have all the beautiful stripes of a zebra. So that's gonna be our inspiration today. Here you can see a, a portrait, an animal portrait done by um, Andy Warhol. And this is part of his series of endangered species. And this is going to be our inspiration today for the artwork. We're gonna use bold, beautiful colors. You don't have to use realistic colors. If you want to, that's fine. Um, but you can just, uh, just you go with your favorite colors that you love. And that's what I always do when I make my art. What I did here for this piece is I used, uh, I kept the background just black and white, traditional zebra colors. But then I, I let my imagination go when I came to coloring in uh, the actual um, zebra. And I worked with some complementary colors, purples and yellows, and then um, I added a pop of green in the eyes, but it's however you want to finish your zebra. But we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna teach you how to draw this very simple pattern, and then you can have fun with your uh, designs. This is one of my students right here, and at the very end of the video, I'm gonna show you um, a slideshow of some of my favorites from fifth grade this year. We're gonna start off our quagga, or if you wanna do the endangered, um, zebra you can do it their faces are very similar we're going to start off by planning so i want to have um, the zebra's head take up most of this paper and this is the uh, 12 and then the 9 comes down here so i'm using 9 by 12 paper i'm going to plan to have my head take up this entire paper here if you look here on my example here it's only about a finger space from the bottom for the nose and then the head is two fingers down. So how I measure is I just take my fingers, put it parallel on the very middle, put a little guideline here in the very center of this page, and then I'm jumping from the very bottom, come right down straight, and do um, a one finger line down here. So that's where the head is gonna fit into, is between those spaces. I want this, here's my center here, this little dot, I want this to be four fingers wide. So I put my fingers in the center here, and I'm gonna come over, I'm centering this on both sides, over and over a little bit, and then measure to make sure you have it four fingers wide. If you're not quite four fingers, just extend it like that. You wanna be able to see, let me show you here, just barely see the line past your four fingers here. And I'm measuring at my knuckle area. If you measure down here your four fingers, where it tapers and gets thinner, yours is gonna be a lot smaller line. So you don't have to get really small. You want this to be pretty big. We want the zebra to take up most of our page. From here, what I'm gonna do is the nose of the zebra. So I'm just gonna come around and up, around and up on this side. You want this to be at least two fingers wide. And then I'm gonna just cap off the nose area here. I'm gonna do a curve, almost like a C curve. If you start off with two straight lines down here, it, it's like an 11 and then just curve to the right and curve to the left. These are little slits for the nostrils. Let me show you here, right there. Now we're gonna connect, we're gonna go down diagonal and then we're gonna gently connect our head. So we wanna go down, down and out diagonal, down and out diagonal, about three fingers down. Same thing on this side, three fingers down. So I'm lining this up, down and out. And then we're gonna connect right here, right there to our head. From here, we're going to make the ear. So on this side, from here, I'm gonna measure from the end of the line to where 
my diagonal and I'm going to find my center and the line's going to be diagonal toward the corner. That's where I'm headed. So find the middle of this line, put the diagonal line toward the corner. This will be the center of the ear. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come find your corner and drop down about two fingers and put a mark. So diagonal down to the width of two fingers. And I'm gonna mark it on this side. Diagonal down two fingers, put a mark. This is the end of my ear. So I'm gonna come over and then down. And I'm gonna curve it around. I'm gonna come over and then curve it down. This is about a finger here. Swoop down and over. Those are our ears. This area is going to be the mane, part of the mane showing. So if you want to add some lines coming up, and this is up to you how you want to do this. You can have them curl, you can have them zigzag, spike, however you want. This one I just did some kind of little, little spiky lines here. This student put them together. And remember, look on the end of the video and you'll see how my other students did. I'll, I'll post a bunch of um, examples of fifth grade students. So now we're going to go ahead and do the eyes. And for the eyes, I'm going to jump down from the diagonal line. We're going to jump down about a finger where the diagonal line ends. And I'm going to go over more than a finger, a little bit, about a finger and a half, over horizontal. So come to this side, jump down about a finger, and this needs to be lined up. So I'm going to come across, double check that it is lined up. That's important because you don't want the eyes to be uh, one lower than the other one. Now I'm going to make mine equal, the same length. Now what I'm going to do is a curve up. So I'm going to curve it up just like that. These are going to be a simplified version of an eye. Now from here, I'm going to do a, um, a, a slight curve and it's going to be almost a C, a C curve here. And then I'm going to give the iris color. So this will be the pupil. He's going to have big exaggerated eyes. I want the eyes to show. I'm just going to blend this into the bottom. I'm going to do the same on this side. You want to make sure that they're similar in size. Take your time to match it up. And then I'm going to color this in. Depending on what you're sketching with, if you're using a pencil, then don't color this in. Wait until you use paint or whatever to color in. But I'm going to do the pupil just so that you see that's the black of the eye. And then the smaller band is where you have the color of the eye. And these are, like I said, exaggerated eyes because they're not that big in scale in real life. Now, the neck, you can decide if you want your neck to come to the left side of the paper or you want it to come down on the right side. So that's up to you how you want to do it. Andy Warhol's here is off to the right, okay? So your head, your neck can come off of the, I'll do one, since this one came off the left side, I'll do this one on the right side. So I'm gonna come down right off past, just past my ear here. You never wanna have it line up with an eye. So I'm gonna have it come just past the ear and I'm gonna go diagonal to the edge of my page. Don't have it come to the bottom of the page. Now his little neck will come off of here. So I'm just gonna have this come down. So get that gives a nice wide neck where we can design some really beautiful stripes. Now for the zebra stripes, you don't have to design it the way I'm gonna design it. These can be, and use your imagination, these can be zigzag, these can be curly, um, these can be just simplified. Let me show you this students. This students just came out straight and then went down and just did some waves like this. Uh, you can get some real fun pattern on here if you'd like you know, with curling and swirling or whatnot. But if you wanna follow me, I'm gonna do one similar to this example here. I like to break up the face area with a center one. So I'm gonna come down to the middle and I'm just gonna put an 11 down here, right in the center. 
and this will form one stripe that comes up and then it branches off almost like a letter Y. It's gonna do the same on this side, so I wanna end it here and I'll have it come up here. So I'm gonna match that just so it's the same on both sides. And then I'm gonna have it branch out. Oops. And then I'm gonna do some small ones. Now when I, when I end this in a point on the zebra, it's gonna be at a point like that. So the stripe comes off the body and then has a pointed end and then tapers back. I like to have one around the ear here, defining back in. Again, it's tapered and pointed, and then it gets wider as it hits the edge of the body. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Taper that. I wanna get this line finished inside the ear, so I'm gonna curve around to the tip. I'm just kinda of curving it to the tip. So this forms the outside. If you want to put a stripe even on the ear, you can. So this forms the outside of the zebra. I'll put a little one down here. And then this is the inside. If you want to even put some little hair in here, you can. I come out just a few little sprigs, sprigs of hair to show that's the inside of the zebra. And then I'm gonna do a stripe in this area. So I come off the edge of the face, and I'm just gonna dip down, end it at a point, a tapered point, come back to the head. I'm gonna match up my sides right there. And then I'm gonna add some neck parts. So I'm gonna come off of the head, give a little swirl, end at a tapered point, and do a little curve. Also on the bottom, come up. Now the quagga had um, stripes on its head and back, but then the, the total back end of him, his hind end, had no stripes. His hind end was uh, horse-like. And of course our zebra has full stripes everywhere. So that's up to you if you're gonna make the endangered zebra or the extinct quagga. Now, for coloring, and I'll show you examples now of my students, this is endless on how you can do this. You can, some of the students made amazing patterns inside each striped and then kept the, the main skin of the body a solid color. Uh, here, I did kind of like some colorations going from uh, orange to yellow, like an almost like an ombre effect. Some of my students did that as well on the stripes. So they came up with some beautiful patterns, beautiful ideas. So stick around and uh, see how they colored it in. But uh, now you decide on how you want to color it. And the best way to do that is to look at your color wheel and select, say, three main colors as your guide for pattern, uh, you know, your, your color scheme and then go from there. But have fun and I hope you enjoyed the lesson.